This video will discuss the Shannon entropy. In the physical sciences, entropy is often described as measuring the disorder of a system and is tied with terms such as chaos and randomness. Although the Shannon entropy is very distinct from scientific entropy, it also measures a very similar quantity, the uncertainty of a distribution. This video will discuss the Shannon entropy from the perspective of information transfer and will go through an intuitive interpretation of the formula that will unlock the expression. As mentioned before, the Shannon entropy is a measure of the uncertainty associated to a probability distribution. For example, if we have a probability distribution where the outcome is relatively certain, like whether the next American president was born in the United States, then the distribution will have low uncertainty. However, if the possible outcomes can vary largely, like the distribution of the winning lotto numbers, then there will be great uncertainty in the outcome. Quantifying uncertainty might seem tough to naturally do. How does one calculate uncertainty, and what would the units of uncertainty even be? Although this initially may seem futile, if we look at uncertainty from a different angle and consider it from an information standpoint, we might be able to rephrase the question to gain better intuition. Instead of asking, what is the uncertainty of a distribution, we can ask, how much information, on average, would we need to encode an outcome from the distribution? If you think about it, it makes sense to quantify uncertainty using information. The more uncertain you are, the more details you may need to figure out what actually happened. But if the outcome is effectively known beforehand, then you'll need little information, maybe even none, to know the outcome. This idea of information may be confusing, so let's introduce a setup that may explain what we mean by this. Imagine that we are on one side of a wall where a random outcome occurs. The outcome is drawn from some underlying random probability distribution. We can observe the outcome of the event, however, there's another person on the other side of the wall who cannot observe the outcome. Our goal is to let the other person know the outcome of the event by only sending a single n-bit number across the channel. Note that before the experiment, we can agree on a mapping function of bits to some real event. However, once we cross the wall, we can only send the n-bit number and nothing else. In this setup, the n-bit number is the information. For example, let's assume that the random event is a coin flip. We know that this probability distribution only has two equally likely outcomes, heads or tails. Hence, we will only need a single one-bit number to describe the outcome. Zero can map to tails and one to heads. After observing the outcome of the coin flip, we can send the relevant bit across the channel to the other person and they will know exactly what the original observation was. So, this coin distribution has an entropy of one bit, i.e. it only takes one bit of information to entirely describe the outcome of the event. Now, imagine a similar random event, but now with eight different possible outcomes. Maybe there's an international football tournament with eight equally strong teams. So the probability of any team winning the tournament is 1 over 8. In this case, we now need 3 bits to encode the outcome, as 3 bits can describe 2 to the power of 3, which equals 8 different states. So after observing which team won the tournament, we can send a 3-bit number to the other person, and they will know exactly what the outcome was. Therefore, this distribution has an entropy of 3 bits. Hopefully we can see that this argument could generalize further to distributions with different number of outcomes. In fact, for a uniform distribution with m possible outcomes, we could write the number of bits required as log base 2 of m. For powers of 2, this is trivial to see. Log base 2 of 2 to the n is n, and n bits allows us to encode 2 to the n different states, showing us that this formula works. However, we can also show that this formula even holds for uniform distributions where the number of outcomes is not a power of 2. Let's show this for the case where m equals 10. Assume that we have a distribution with 10 equally likely outcomes. 4 bits give 16 unique states, so we could in theory use 4 bits to encode every possible outcome. However, this is inefficient as it leaves 6 states left over. To do better, we can observe 3 separate outcomes and encode the outcomes in groups of 3. Each outcome can be one of 10 different states, so there are 1,000 different possible triples of outcomes. 10 bits will give us 1,024 different states 
as 2 to the 10 equals 1024, which is sufficient to encode all 1000 unique states. So what we're saying is that with 10 bits, we can encode three independent outcomes. The average number of bits per outcome is then 10 divided by 3, which equals 3.333. This scheme, though, isn't completely efficient as we still have 24 unused states. For the most efficient encoding scheme, we're looking for the case where 10 to the g equals 2 to the b, where g is the number of grouped observations. By taking the log of both sides and rearranging, we can show that the most efficient number of bits to encode each outcome is log base 2 of 10, which is the entropy expression. Also, log base 2 of 10 is 3.32, which is very similar to our 3.333 estimate. Let's return back to the discussion of entropy. We've shown that for a uniform distribution with m outcomes, the entropy is log base 2 of m bits. However, there still is a big issue, which is that most distributions are not uniform. That being said, we can use our previous statement to help measure the entropy of any distribution, even non-uniform ones. We do this by associating bits to outcomes. A m uniform distribution has m possible outcomes, each with probability 1 over m. So in terms of entropy, we can interpret each outcome as needing log base 2 of 1 over p bits to encode. This can be simplified by taking the fraction out. Note that if we plug in the probability of 1 over m in, we get the expected expression of log base 2 of m. For an arbitrary probability distribution where the probabilities vary, we can say that if an outcome has probability of pi, then this many bits are needed to encode that outcome. And we can calculate the expected number of bits over all the outcomes by multiplying the expression by each probability and summing over all possible events. This leads to an expression which may look familiar, as this is the Shannon entropy formula. So this is my interpretation of the Shannon entropy formula. It is the measure of how much information, on average, is needed to describe outcomes of a distribution. It is linked tightly with uncertainty, since if we're less certain of an outcome, we may need more information to describe it. Why is entropy important? Well, it can provide useful statistics for how much information we gain from observing an outcome or tell us how varied the outcomes of a distribution are. As a result, this expression crops up in many places, particularly within information theory. This marks the end of the video. Hopefully the content helped you understand the Shannon entropy a bit better and gave intuition for how it measures uncertainty. If you want to stay posted for any probabilistic theory or machine learning content from this channel, then remember to subscribe to get any future updates. Otherwise, thanks for watching.